Hey everybody, welcome back. Today, we are gonna talk about computers. No, not that type of computer. This type of computer. Yes, one of the most frequent things that people ask me about is what is this little boxy thing on my handlebars on my Brompton? You know, this little boxy thing. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the Garmin Edge Explorer, and I'm gonna tell you why this is my favorite cycling computer. Now, before we begin, I just want to say that this is not going to be an in-depth technical review of this particular bicycle computer. There are a lot of other YouTubers who have went into detail about every single function and feature of this computer, and I don't think there's any more I can add on that. Also, technical reviews are something that I'm not very good at, and to be quite honest, I'm just not that smart. And there's so many features on this particular bicycle computer that I just do not use. Garmin makes a lot of computers and this computer has some features and functions that it does better than all the rest of the computers. And there are some things about this particular computer that I like better than all the other computers. Now, as you guys know, Garmin is huge in the world of navigation. They make navigation systems for cars. They make these little portable navigation systems for backpackers and hikers. That way they don't get lost in the woods. And of course, they make little cycling computers for us cyclists. When you're going through the current lineup of Garmin cycling computers, it can definitely get overwhelming figuring out which cycling computer best suits your needs. As you guys know, Garmin computers are expensive, and that's one of the biggest complaints that people have about these things is the fact that they are so expensive. A lot of people look at them and they're like, oh no, I'm just gonna go buy that cheap bicycle computer at Walmart. Now, these things have a lot, and I do mean a lot of advantages over those cheap little bicycle computers that you buy at Walmart. But you can definitely overspend on these things. Some of the models are more expensive than others, so it's good to have a brief overview. You know, a brief, just a brief overview of each of the model's feature sets. That way you can buy one that best suits your needs. Now, before you do that, you have to sit down and have a little discussion with yourself. You need to say, what do I need out of a cycling computer? Am I a performance cyclist? Do I need all these performance tracking features? Am I a touring cyclist? Do I need all the navigation features? Or do I just need a basic cycling computer that gives me basic information like how fast am I going and the distance I traveled and how fast I got there? You need to figure that stuff out before you even think about pulling the trigger on one of these little expensive devices. And I mean it, think about it. <laughs> because you definitely don't wanna spend a bunch of extra money on features you're never going to use. On top of that, let me tell you something. Come in closer, a little closer. Whoa, whoa, too close, back up. Be careful. The marketing on these little computers can be deceptive. You see this particular model? This is the Edge 520 Plus. Now this was my first cycling computer, guys. This one was recommended to me by a bicycle shop employee. I asked him specifically, I need something with maps. I need something with some sort of navigation features on it. And he pointed me to this model. And if you look at the box, man, it's kind of deceiving. It has this uh, map on the front of it with a little arrow and it shows the little arrow following the line. And it shows this little indicator that says, turn left at 2.5 kilometers at this particular road. And you're looking at it and you're like, oh, hey, this thing's got navigation. But don't be deceived, guys. Even though it looks like it has navigation, it doesn't have navigation in the sense that I am thinking about navigation. This model has a very, very watered down, limited form of navigation, which involves the Garmin Connect app and you have to build a cycling route and upload it to the device and... There's the rain again. A few moments later. Anyway, sorry about the interruption, guys. The thunder was getting quite loud and I had to shut down the video. You know this is not an ASMR video, so. <laughs> but anyway, back to the computers. The 520 Plus, the Edge 520 Plus, like I said, it does have some form of navigation on it, but it's very limited. This particular model, it will only navigate you along a predefined course. So basically you have to get on the computer, you get on the Garmin Connect app, you build a course, and once you build that course, this computer will navigate you only along that course. It will not redirect you if you get off a course. It will not navigate you to the course. It doesn't have any kind of feature set where you can type in a location or any kind of waypoints where you can put in a waypoint and it'll navigate you there. It will not do any of that. It's just a basic course navigation and that is it. 
And that's what you gotta be aware of. Some of the devices have a little bit better feature sets than others. Some of them have a little bit better navigation features than others. Some of them have a little bit better performance tracking features than others. And that's why you have to go through the feature sets really, really carefully. That way you know what you're getting. But anyway, guys, just don't be like me and be deceived by a picture on a box. <laughs> get on the Garmin website, look at all the current models that they offer, and go down their feature sets and determine what you need based off that. If you need something like a basic cycling computer, then I would go with something like the Edge 130. But if you want the Creme Deluxe computer that has all the best navigation features, all the best performance tracking features, everything, then I would go with something like the 1030 or the 1030 Plus. Now all the cycling computers that are between the 130 and the 1030 Plus, all of them can do certain things really well and other things not so well. The one that I like the best is obviously the Garmin Edge Explorer because this computer out of all the rest of them is built more for touring cyclists. It has touring cyclists in mind for this computer. It can do some of the performance tracking features like the other ones do, but it's limited in what it can do. This particular computer can't hook up to a power meter. It cannot do Strava Live segments. It can't do some of those features that maybe a performance cyclist would want. It does do a few of the performance features like being able to hook up to a heart rate monitor and a cadence sensor and stuff like that, but it's limited. Other computers can do a lot of uh, performance features really well, but don't have the great navigation features that this computer has. The Garmin Edge Explorer's navigation features are on par with the more expensive 1030 model. And this one only costs $247, so it's a really good bang for your buck. I have a little bit of a confession to make. <laughs> as many times in two years of use, or almost two years of use, I've dropped this computer, I don't know how many times on the hard concrete, because every time I take it off, I'm like, ooh, 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 you know, and I drop the thing. And it is never once broke. But the last time I dropped it, it broke the side here, and it cracked the screen. And the touch inputs kind of work, but they really don't, or they're very inaccurate. So it's not, it's not functioning properly. So I had to order one off of Amazon and I got it in the mail. And I figured, why not do an unboxing and show you guys this computer? Because a lot of people have been asking about it. So let's unbox this thing and see what you get in the box. Here we are guys. Let's open this baby up. Oh yeah. Ooh, nice and brand new. So you got your cycling computer. Don't do that. You get a data cable. You get a lanyard. And you get some of these basic mounts. I really wouldn't use these if I were you. If I were you guys, I would buy something like this, which kind of bolts to your handlebars, and then you can put your cycling computer on this and I think that works a lot better. It's much more steady than something like this. So this is how this works. You put this little rubber gasket on the plastic piece, which is the mount, and that keeps from scratching your handlebars. You attach the rubber bands to the tabs on either side like that, and then one on this side as well. And basically it holds on with the rubber bands. The problem with these mounts is they can move, as you can see. <laughs> Unlike this mount, which is really stable, that does not move around, whereas the one with the rubber bands, that does move around. Now these things are an additional accessory, guys. They definitely cost about 20 or 30 bucks, sometimes 40, depending on which one you get. I think this one was a little bit more expensive than some of them, but they're definitely worth it. Let's take off this plastic here, turn her on. Now these things are made to work with your phone, so you need to download the Garmin Connect app. You'll go through the pairing process, and after you're done with the pairing process, then the phone and the Garmin Edge Explorer will work seamlessly together. And every time you turn on your Garmin Edge Explorer, any data from your rides will automatically be transferred to your phone. Now look, I could spend a whole video talking about the Garmin Connect app, but basically I'm just gonna show you one or two features on the Garmin Connect app that I like, and I'm gonna talk about the features that I like the most about the Garmin Edge Explorer. 
There's all kinds of functionality on the Garmin Connect app. You can build your own courses. It tracks all your data. There's multiple devices. You can set up all kinds of apps on there and download those apps to your Garmin Edge Explore. There's all kinds of things that you can do with that app. The things that I use most on the app is the data tracker keeps track of my miles, keeps track of how much I rode that day. It keeps track of my progress on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis, and even a yearly basis. It shows me my whole ride, all the data, and it shows me a map of everywhere I've been and how long it took me to get there. With all the features that this Garmin device comes with and has, the feature that is the biggest selling point for me for the Garmin Edge Explorer is the map feature. The map feature is the best. I didn't want to have to go out there and buy the 1030 because the 1030 is like 600 and something dollar computer. I don't want to spend that kind of money on a cycling computer, okay? It's just ridiculous. But this one gives you all the good maps that you get off that 1030 model and minus a lot of the performance features that I don't ever use. So. This is the way to go if you're a touring cyclist. All the little data features that you can look at, like uh, speed, distance, heading, um, elapsed time, elevation, all those data features, you can get that on almost any of the Garmin devices. So that's not a reason to buy this. I love those features, don't get me wrong, but they're not reasons to buy this particular computer. The reason to buy this particular computer is because of the maps function. And I know you can't see that because it's probably flickering, but the maps feature on this thing is the best. I use the maps a lot. And a lot of people are like, well, why don't you just use your Google Maps on your cell phone, Brian, if you wanna navigate this somewhere? Well, one of the biggest reasons, guys, and this is one of the biggest reasons why you'd want a Garmin GPS over a phone is because, well, let's just say two or three reasons. The first reason being that if you're using maps and you're also listening to your headphones like I do quite frequently, you're running down the battery on your phone, especially when you're going on a 70, 80 mile round trip. Why bother with that when you can just use a GPS on your Garmin device? Another reason is because the phone is not accurate. The Garmin is accurate within a couple of feet of you. This, it can be off by 40 feet and it's aggravating. And trust me, I know because I'm out there bicycle messengering with my phone a lot and it'll tell you to turn and your turn is really like 20 or 30 feet up the road. That's aggravating like for a touring cyclist when you've got a web work of trails and it tells you to turn and you turn on the wrong trail because guess what? Your phone's off by 30 or 40 feet. And it's just aggravating because you're constantly having to stop and look at your phone and making sure you're on the right track. To me, that's just annoying. I don't know how many times I turned down the wrong trail just because it told me to turn. It said, turn right up here and then you turn right and then you go down that trail and then you're like, oh man, I'm going down the wrong way. And then you hit the backtrack and all that stuff. It's just aggravating. Whereas this is much more accurate. When it says turn, believe me, you're turning. Another reason why I like these over a cell phone is because when I go into the mountains a lot of times, the cell phone loses service. And when it loses service, you lose your navigation. This is satellite linked. So when you're up in the mountains and you're following a trail, as long as you have clear open sky and you're not obstructed by a roof or anything, you're gonna have navigation. So this thing will definitely work. So those are three reasons why I like the Garmin navigation over a cell phone navigation. The navigation is the main selling feature for this particular model. It's got turn by turn directions. It'll beep an alert when it wants you to turn. It'll warn you of sharp turns. Much like the 1030, this one will also recalculate and get you right back on course if you get off course. This one also has a lot of point of interest. So if you need to find a gas station, you need to find shopping, whatever you want to find, you can just type it into the screen here and say, look, show me the nearest gas station and it will route you to the nearest gas station, shopping, grocery stores, uh, landmarks, whatever. It's really, really nice. Especially when you're touring and you want to see where the coolest attractions are you can actually find that on this garmin gps another cool feature is the trail forks app 
This is one of the things that you download off of the Garmin Connect app and you put it on your phone. The Trail Forks is really nice because it gives you hiking trails, it gives you mountain biking trails, it'll show you all the most popular trails, it'll show you common trails. If you wanna know where a trail is, it will show you exactly where that trail is and it will navigate you to that trail. So there are so many awesome navigation features, I can't even go into them all in this video. But that is my big reason why I like this particular computer. And of course the more expensive model has those features too, but for the price, this one is the best one in my opinion. But guys, this video is already getting long enough as it is. I might do some more videos on the Garmin device and go a little bit more in depth if that's something you guys wanna see. But I'm just giving you my opinion for those of you out there that are interested in cycling computers and are kind of wondering which one you should get. If you want navigation, this is the one to get. If you don't want navigation, you just want a basic cycling computer, I would go get the lowest model, the 130. That would definitely work just fine for you. But for me, this one is the one I like. Anyway, guys, if you have any comments, questions, leave it down in the comment and questions section. Slap like on the video if you like it, and I will talk with you guys on the next one. Bye-bye. Whoa, 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 also, before I forget, if you got Butterfingers just like me, it's good to go on Amazon and order one of these rubber little bumpers to protect your device because these touchscreens are glass fronts, and if you drop these things, there's always that potential to break it. So having a little rubber shield around the side of it definitely will help. Just saying.